Imagine, if you will, four six-year-old boys from three different classrooms in the same school. On an almost daily basis, they would throw things around the room, sometimes at people, swear, run out into the hallway, hit people, kids, and sometimes even their teachers, creating disruptions that made it impossible for them to learn and difficult for the other children as well. In March, those four boys were referred to be in a dance movement therapy group with me. My first challenge was getting them from their classrooms to the therapy rooms without them running down the hall, sticking their heads into other people's classrooms, and swearing. But once we got to the therapy room, they loved to move. We quickly established a warm-up routine where they would show their favorite movements while we watched and did other activities such as feeling charades and movement stories. But I only had eight weeks with these boys and I felt like I needed to get to the meat of their anger issue quickly. I decided to jump in with both feet using a technique I call externalization. I asked the boys to imagine that they could take their anger outside their body and make it into a statue. I had them show me with their hands how wide and how tall the statue was and to describe its color, shape, texture. After each of the boys had a turn to show and tell about their statue, we realized that all four boys had made their statue bigger than they were. In other words, their anger was larger than life. I gave each boy a pillow and asked them to pretend that their anger statue was on the pillow and to find a spot in the room for their statue to go. They walked around and found their spot. I then had them experiment with different approaches, coming up close to the to the anger, right up to it, as close as they could get, and to move back as far back as they could get in the room, to run up to the anger, crawl, circle around it, as many approaches as they could think of, all the while feeling, how did that feel in their body? After a while, we sat down, and I asked them if there was one more thing we could do with the statue before the session ended, what would it be? As one, they said, smash it to bits, destroy it. I wasn't really surprised by this response because many of the kids that I work with that have anger issues, their anger gets them in trouble constantly. They would like nothing better than to get rid of it. I talked to the boys about the fact that anger is important. It tells us what we like and don't like. It helps us make decisions. It lets us know when we need to stand up for something. So what if, instead of destroying the anger, we could think about it differently? Was the anger going to control us, like when it was larger than life, or were we going to control the anger? Could we visualize it as something smaller? The boys drew pictures, imagining the anger as a small creature in a cage that lived inside of them. The cage had bars so they could listen to the anger. It could talk to them and tell them what was important, but it couldn't take over. We discussed that sometimes, if they felt really strongly about something, those bars might get weak, and that would be a signal that they needed to take a break to build them up again. An hour after this session, I saw one of these boys with his class where I taught embodied social-emotional skills. He usually had difficulty during this class and would frequently run out of the room. On this particular day, the children were taking turns leading the class non-verbally to do different movements with a stretchy cloth. This child was getting anxious. He wanted his turn, and he wanted it now. I moved over to him, and I whispered, this is what we were just talking about in your session. If the anger controls you, you're going to run out of the room like you did last week. If you control the anger, you're going to talk to it. You're going to tell it, I know you want to go now. I know it's hard to wait. But anger, there's only three people in front of us. You can do it. You can hang in there, anger. If you talk to the anger, you'll end up getting a turn. He actually waited, and he got his turn. He finished the class feeling really good about himself. Over the next few weeks, I heard from teachers that all four boys were making significant progress, decreasing the frequency and intensity of their anger outbursts. It appeared that understanding that they weren't their anger that their anger was only a small part of them, a part that they could look at, think about, move with, and draw, gave them an ability to work with the anger and control it. Mm -hmm.